All right. Uh, so I'm going to tell you how to go through your IELTS test successfully. Uh, I'll tell you about both computer delivered as well as paper delivered, right? So uh, let's get started. Your IELTS test starts with listening, whether it is computer delivered or paper delivered. And before that, they have certain formalities. They check your ID. It can be your CNIC or it can be your passport. So if you mention passport, you have to take your passport. They will check that there. there's a queue. And then finally, you will arrive uh, in the test center or you can say the auditorium or hall where they are going to conduct your test. Uh, if it is computer delivered, there will be a group of five to seven candidates in one computer lab. And if it is paper delivered, there may be up to 100, 150 candidates in a big auditorium, right? So this is the main thing. Now, let's talk about paper delivered IELTS first. In paper delivered IELTS, when you go there, there will be instruction messages. Uh, they will give you instructions that we are going to do this, 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 and all that. And they do not allow any type of uh, wristwatch any type of mobile device or anything like that. And even if by mistake you take a wristwatch or a mobile phone or anything like that, your test will be canceled and you may be banned for three years, whether you use it or you don't use it. So you have to be extra careful with that, right? Now, after that, uh, before starting listening test, if it is paper delivered aisles, they will give you a set of headphones. And if it is, com this is wireless, by the way, right? Uh, and if it is uh, paper, computer delivered dials, they will give you wired headphones. Uh, and they will be connected with the computer and the sound quality is going to be very good. One piece of advice for those who are going to appear in computer delivered dials. After your listing test, you may request the invigilators there that I want to keep wearing the headphone. Uh, you know, they have the bigger headphones for computer delivered and there is that voice cancellation. So if you keep wearing the headphone during your reading test and during your writing test, the noises surrounded by uh, like in the area, they will not bother you. For example, you are having your test, somebody there, <coughs> someone hears, Achoo! something like that. Okay, so you may be bothered what happened. Okay, <laughs> all right. So you can just ask them that if I keep wearing my headphone, so it's gonna be good. You will be disconnected from any noise and all that. Now, let's talk about paper delivered aisles first. When they start listening, first they will play the audios, test audios, and then they, everybody will say, okay, now the sound quality is good, it's fine. Uh, this headphone has got a button here like this, and this is the red light. And remember, they have infrared, 360 angle. Infrared here, here, here. So you can wear it like this, you can wear it like this, both ways it is fine, okay? And right in front of you, there will be infrared plate. So this device is going to communicate with that plate, and then you will be able to hear things properly. So just be careful, don't move your head quite a lot. For example, if you're doing it like this and you sit, so when they play the test audio, you need to check your cells that if I just do it like this, is it still working? Or otherwise you can do it like this. Uh, yes, once in the class, we played the headphones and there was a guy in the class with long hair and he, his headphone was not working. Then we gave him another headphone, it was fine and it was not working. What happened? This device actually dived into his hair. You know, he was just wearing it and his hair came all over it and then it stopped communication and all that. So be careful. During your listening test, if this device stops working, you can immediately raise your hand and they will give you another one. They have, I mean, there are invigilators holding the handsets like this. And if you say, my headphone is not working, they'll give you another one and all that, okay? So listening test will start. Initially, they will just give you the question booklet and answer sheet. Now, you are not allowed to touch uh, the question booklet unless the exam supervisor announces. And if you pick up question booklet without announcement, you may be penalized for that as well. Be careful, okay? So they give you, I need answer sheets. They give you the answer sheets. You need to write your name down, your test center number, and all that stuff. And then you will put the answer sheet aside 
first you are going to complete your IELTS test on the question booklet which they are going to provide you and the question booklet is like Cambridge IELTS books and we have listening tests in in the book so the question booklet for paper delivered IELTS will be like that okay when they start with part one it's a good idea yeah this is the answer sheet and uh, this answer sheet may be a uh, two side print one side reading and one side listening so when you're doing listening and if you transfer your listening answers to reading and reading answers to listening you will get one mark for that one band only keep it in mind i'm telling you they will not say okay by mistake it is done no if listening answers do not match examiner's answer key they will cross all the answers so be careful listening side and reading side and one more thing this is a writing answer sheet okay so this is for task one now by mistake if you write task two here and where there is task two and you write task one here again you will get one band okay because task one examiner may be different task two examiner may be different so if they see something else which does not relate the topic they are going to cancel it for you okay so <clears throat> in listening initially they will give you half minute to read the questions and try to read as many questions as they instruct for example if they say you now have some time to look at questions one to five only focus one to five don't try to read all the questions then you will not be able to read them properly so read the questions the way i read the questions in the class when i teach you that you need to underline this word you need to focus this the synonym of this and all that and on your question booklet however you write your answers that doesn't matter capital small in ielts they are not case sensitive let me tell you in all four modules of ielts they are not case sensitive case sensitive means capital letter or small letter right so for example listening answer sheet reading answer sheet you can use all capital you can use all small you can use first capital rest small there is no problem writing answer sheet surprisingly i confirmed this thing from an examiner uh, right british council examiner and they said you can use all capital in writing now how to follow capitalization rule for example if you want to write the word new york for new york n should be capital for york y should be capital so if you choose to write all capital you can write n and y uh, the size of n and y should be bigger than other letters so you may write all capital if you are comfortable with that okay so anyways listening test will start at the end of each part they will give you half minute to check your answers and if there is anything to check you can do that otherwise jump to part 2 you will get half minute from part 1 and half minute from part 2 that will give you one minute time and during the test you can go to any part for example if they start listening with part 1 and i go to part 2 part 3 part 4 and it's a good idea to take a look at full test that okay part 1 we have one word only part 2 multiple choice part 3 this part 4 this so you can just take a look so so that you are mentally prepared and you can do another thing initially when the test starts they will say cambridge ielts you are going to listen to a number of different recordings and all that by that time you can come to part 3 and just read 3 4 questions and when they say section 1 come back to section 1 okay so this is how you can have more time remember part 3 is more challenging and part 4 as well in part 4 they'll give you one minute before when part 2 finishes on the question booklet if you make a mistake that doesn't matter if you write a wrong spelling that doesn't matter you can always correct it when you are going to transfer your answers to the answer sheet there you need to write correct answers on question booklet if you made a spelling mistake that doesn't matter now part 2 uh, then you move to part 3 and uh, in part 4 initially they will give you 1 minute to read questions 31 to 40 so you need to use that time to read all the questions i've noticed when some of the students do they quickly read the question and then they start realizing my headphone is not working in the class even in part 4 some students say sir my headphone is not working we say just wait the audio hasn't started yet this is your time to read the questions so spend 1 minute wisely 
It's not that within 20 seconds you read all the questions and then you are waiting. Come on, chalao we. Something like that, okay? So don't do it. Read the questions carefully. <coughs> if you read them before time, you can read them again. Once your listening test is over, uh, they will just say that is the end of the test. If it is computer delivered IELTS, you need to type your answers. In part one and part four computer delivered, you have to type words. And these words are mainly one word and or a number. And for part two and part three computer delivered, you just have to click. For example, multiple choice, you click A, B, C. For example, list of headings, you drag the heading and put it in front of question number. So it's drag and drop, click, it's easy, not difficult, okay? Uh, once your listening test is over, on computer delivered, they will give you three minutes to check your answers. Now what to do? Go to part one, just take a look at all the questions, one, two, three, four, five, six, then come to part two, then part three. If there is any spelling mistake, if you missed any letter, in three minutes you can do that all. And if it is paper delivered, you have 10 minutes to transfer the answers to the answer sheet. Now you need to write every answer carefully. If you've done spelling mistake on the question booklet, that's okay, but there should not be any spelling mistake here, right? So once the time is over, there will be exam supervisor on the stage and exam supervisor will say, candidate, stop writing and you need to stop writing immediately. If you keep writing and they announce stop writing, you may be penalized. One of the students was transferring the answers of listening and the time was over and they said stop writing and she continued. Okay, and then invigilator came and removed last five answers. See that? Invigilator came because you use pencil only. Invigilator removed the last answers and took it away. So be careful, right? You're trying to write one answer and four answers are gone and this will destroy you. Any bad incident on the day of your IELTS test can destroy your test. In listening, if they remove your answers, you will not be able to do reading properly. You'll be thinking, <laughs> reading, <laughs> listening removed and all that, okay? Now, after this, they will, uh, they will give you reading question booklet. And by the way, computer delivered test will be locked. After three minutes, automatically test will be locked. Mouse will not work, that keyboard will not work, and then they will be the reading test, okay? Now, when they start reading, reading answer sheet is same, and the question booklet of reading is on the table upside down. And when exam supervisor says, candidates, start, or you can start your reading test now. You pick it up. You take a look, okay, part one, questions, part two, questions, part three, questions, so that you are familiar what is going to come ahead. And then always start with part one. One of my students was very wise, started with part three, and then he realized part three is tough. Then he decided to come back to part one. Then he realized, first I should do part two. Then he went to part two. So if you do it like this, Another student adopted this strategy that first I will do all true false not given. Then I will do all sentence completion. So these type of things can make the test difficult. You need to do it systematically, passage after passage. First complete one passage, then come to the next passage, okay? So for reading test, they will not give you any extra time to transfer the answers to this answer sheet. Within one minute, one hour, you have to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. And remember, examiner will check the answer sheet. I have several examples of students who forgot to transfer the answers to the answer sheet and they got one band in reading. Even they sent me the result also, okay? In computer delivered IELTS, you don't have to transfer reading answers anywhere. Even in computer delivered IELTS, you can copy paste your answers. If it is one word only, no more than two words, you can copy and then paste your answers, okay? This is possible. For true, false, not given, there will be three options. You need to uh, click one option. For sentence, uh, for sentence completion, again, copy paste can work. For uh, list of headings, you can drag a heading and drop in front of question number. And uh, you can change the text size as well. If the questions are small and you cannot read properly, you can increase the font size of the passage and one side passage, one side questions. Never. In computer delivered IELTS, they will not give you any lingual assistance. 
what is lingual assistance anything that highlights any auto correction control f like you're looking for the clue word you can write control f all the options that we have in microsoft word all those options will be disabled it's just like you know we've got the notepad there is no option there it's just going to be like that so if your answer is wrong it is wrong there will not be any prompt that you have written uh, you have done a spelling mistake or anything like that not at all yes but in computer delivered ielts it's not very convenient with the right click of mouse you can get the highlighter right so you can just right click the mouse and get the highlighter in the first 30 seconds when they give you time to read the questions but otherwise right click then again going back to the normal cursor then right click then going back, that may take time okay that's a good question uh, they give you username and your login detail and they give you pen and paper for that so that blank sheet of paper remains on the table where you are attending your computer delivered ielts in listening part 1 and part 4 if you miss any answer you can immediately write there for example you missed the answer of question number 5 you can write 5 and then the answer so that will be on the table and then later on you can type the answer you can go any time anywhere for example they start part 1 and you want to go to part 4 you can scroll and you can go there there is no problem okay so for reading now the reading test starts first of all you need to attend reading part 1 passage 1 and in passage 1 mostly if it is academic reading you will find sentence completion and true false not given if it is gender training reading in part 1 and part 2 you will only find sentence completion and true false not given so both are type a questions you will find the answers in a sequence and you can complete that all uh you need to follow the time uh what do you say time warnings during your reading test they will tell you 30 minutes left 20 minutes 5 minutes 3 minutes and all that and make sure you transfer the answers there and if you do your reading systematically means type a questions first and type b questions last and i told you there are only two type b questions one is which paragraph contains the following information and second is list of headings when the passage is labeled a b c d it means there will be type b questions if the passage is not labeled there will not be any type b questions so once your reading test is over they will collect question booklet from you and they will collect this answer sheet back from you and then they will give you writing answer sheet which looks like this this is your writing answer sheet they'll give you this and then the question paper will be given later first you need to write your name and other details on your writing answer sheet yeah and uh, yeah it's just like this uh, so you need to write your name and then you've got candidate name center name candidate number and all that okay so uh after that they will give you question paper they will put the question paper on the table you are not allowed to touch when exam supervisor says you can start your writing test pick it up read the topic of task 2 first you need to read the topic of task 2 why because you need to just decide uh what are you going to write and your brain will start working the first thing is identify the type of essay the second thing is you need to understand the topic of the essay you know in ielts when you write uh, there is one criteria which is called task response or we call it task achievement now task achievement means how thoroughly you cover the topic so if you add something which is not according to the topic it is off the topic and if you cover one part of the topic more than the other one again that will give you the negative impact so you need to cover topic carefully if they in the topic if they say teaching has become this in high school so you need to talk about school teaching you're not supposed to talk about university teaching that is not in the scope of the topic okay don't write any quotations don't write any saying don't write any fake survey reports don't give headings in ielts writing don't write any bullet points heading number 1 heading number 2 heading number 3 bullet point number 1 you are just allowed to use pencil markers highlighters they are not allowed okay so you have one hour time 
first read task two topic, understand the topic and start thinking, what will I write? And then come to task one, read the topic and start writing. Now, if you appear in paper delivered IELTS, there are some benefits. The first thing is your handwriting is good, bad or ugly. No problem in computer delivered IELTS as you have to type it. The second thing is you will get the counter. As you type, you have typed 50 words. You can see 50 words I have typed. Then you type on and by the end when you reach, you see, okay, I have typed 300 words. That's good. If they are less than 300, you can go back to any paragraph and you can edit your essay. Most important thing in writing is proofreading. And you must proofread your essay. You must proofread your task one. Proofreading can increase your band by half. For example, otherwise, if you're getting 5.5 and you proofread your essay or your report, you may get six bands. So you must spare time for proofreading, okay? Uh, they will give you one hour and two tasks. You may start with task one first because task one is equal to three band and task two is equal to six band, two third, okay? So just finish task one in 10 to 15 minutes. If it is gender training, letter writing, 150 words you can write in 10 to 15 minutes. If it is academic IELTS report writing, you don't have to think too much. You just have to look at the data, analyze the data in your report. So task two should be written extra with extra care. First read the topic, understand the topic, then decide how many paragraphs you are going to write. And these paragraphs should be written clearly. And one idea per paragraph. And that idea should be well developed idea. Okay, so uh, in writing, by the way, you will have enough time. I mean, you will have time for proofreading. First five minutes for brainstorming. Read the topic and start thinking. Okay, brainstorming. Then you can start writing. Your writing time is maximum 30 to 40 minutes for both tasks. Okay, and then the last five to 10 minutes and they will not allow you to leave unless they finish the time. For example, if the time, if the finishing time is four o'clock, you are not allowed to leave the room. You will stay there. Even if you complete your writing in 20 minutes, they will not let you go. You have to stay. So it's better to read and to, uh, what do you say, proofread your essay and don't even think about cheating. Let me give you this warning. There will be a straight away three years ban on you if you are found guilty. And what is cheating? For example, you ask someone there, what's the spelling of cat? And he will look back, that is cheating. Another cheating, uh, can I have a pencil? Right, and the person will give you the pencil, you and the person both may be banned for three years. If you have any problem, just raise your hand, there will be that invigilator and you can ask the invigilator whatever you want to say, the person sitting next to you and don't even think, like one student, he just asked the spelling of something and he was banned for three years. And he said, sir, believe me, nobody was looking at me at that time. They were all looking there and I just asked a simple spelling and he was banned for three years. So one, one mistake, one small mistake can cost you three years, right? Then you cannot appear in aisles all over the world anywhere. So be extra careful <clears throat> when you are in your aisles exam your mouth is totally shut. And especially in reading, you are not allowed to do lip sync. For example, you're reading like this. Okay, they will give you a warning. You need to read, in reading module, you need to read like this. <laughs> okay, like this you will read with your mouth shut. Okay, whispering is not allowed and all that. So once your test is over, it's going to be stressful three hours. Actually, it is four hour experience. Your, your reporting time is at least one hour before the test starts. And then when they finish, again, you come out and it, it takes some time. So four hours are going to be stressful. But once you finish, oh, you will take a sigh of relief. And when you come back home, you'll be very, very hungry. So eat something. And one more thing, do not take extra liquids. During the exam, they don't allow any water bottles. They will give you one water bottle and uh, that you can take. And uh, labeled pencils or erasers are not allowed. Like, you know, they have given some information on that. For example, if you've got an eraser and on eraser, something is written. 
So such type of results are not allowed. And if you don't have stationery, you can request them. They will provide you pencil, eraser, sharpener, and all that stuff, right? So is there any question about exam or anything? Yes. Yes. 